So I'm in Las Vegas right now, and I have to tell you, the landscape of this town just keeps changing. Like, I didn't realize, like, out here right now, you know that DJ music? That wah, 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 out here in Las Vegas right now, the highest paid entertainers are all those DJs. Whoop, 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 that shit. That shit is the biggest fucking thing. Pause. Right, we get it, Bill. Okay, yeah, so that fucking shit <laughs> is huge. There is literally out here these, these fucking clubs. I mean, these, these, uh, these casinos are building these clubs. They have more clubs than they actually have, like, legitimate DJs. Um. And they are there. I was literally I was reading this thing. A lot of literal stuff, Bill. We get it. You're not lying to us. Uh, I was reading this article uh, called DJ Wars inside the Las Vegas battle for the world's top electric electronic music talent. Now, these fucking guys like I, I don't know who any of them are because I'm old. Afro Jack. Um, Calvin Harris. I don't know who any of these guys are. Um. A couple of their songs, I've heard them, though, you know, because my wife watches uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians and shit, and they're always playing that, and the, and the Iranian one, the Shahs of Sunset, um, where they got that dude, the gay guy on that show, looks like Freddie Mercury, fuck Joseph Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> um, he looks like gay Saddam Hussein is what he looks like, and he's a fucking riot. Um, Because he's always stirring shit up between the ladies. He absolutely loves it. And he's so fucking passive aggressive. He'll be like, hey, so what did Miranda say when she called you this? What happened? And then they just, I'm I'm doing doing a hacky gay accent. He fucking, I don't know, whatever. Stay on the topic, Bill. So these fucking DJs, dude, like they're making, like, what do they say here? Which once was hundred million, dude. That's it. Whatever. They're building these these clubs. They're these giant like square rooms, and they just pack in like five thousand, six thousand young beautiful people, and the dude or whatever. I don't know if there's any women DJs. It's got to be, whatever. The men and women DJs go up there, and uh, they're not just playing records like I thought. I guess they, they come up with that shit. Like they come up with that. That's theirs. That's not a sample from like fucking John Lennon imitating one of the Three Stooges. This this is their original shit. So they fucking go up there. They're famous across. I know a lot of you guys already know this shit. I don't know. They are fucking world famous. They got to lug all their mixes and all their shit around the world. Their giant mouse heads and all this stuff. And they just they go they just go out there and they play their shit and they're making a zillion dollars. So, anyways, out here in Vegas, that's how they're making all the money. That's how they're packing out the casinos. Are are, uh, are these DJs? And um, they barely promote anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is the deal. But um, they try to say that the young kids don't really gamble. And they just come out and they get fucked up and they go to these DJ shows and um, and they're able to make their money. But this, I don't want to like name names. I mean, the article basically names names and says how much money they're making. I think that's a little fucking tacky. But they were saying one guy made like $58 million last year playing that shit to these, to these kids. And I got to tell you something. If you're in a fucking casino... And they don't have that DJ music going on. I swear to God, like uh, the casinos I was in last night at 46 years of age, I was kind of like the youngest person in the casino. It was fucking unreal. 
I was looking around going like, where, where are all the, where is everybody? It's just a bunch of old people just sitting there. And, uh, I guess they're all, they're all at these other casinos that have these, these, uh, these DJ rooms. So here's the funny thing, the typical fucking thing. So this is the, so this is the big war now. So all these fucking casinos are building these giant square rooms and then they're, they're fighting over, you know, the top DJs to get them there. And they're like doubling the asking prices and all that. It's going through the fucking roof and it's literally reminding me of uh, the stand-up comedy boom when they start, when they, because like right now they have more rooms than they actually have legitimate people that can fill up the rooms. And they, they pack in like five, 6,000 people a night. Um, but I guess that's down from like seven, 8,000. And it's, it's the exact same thing that, um, I can't say I saw it in stand-up comedy, but right when I started stand-up comedy, I started in March of 1992. Yeah, I know, I'm old. Um, they, they had basically, at that point, the fallout had already begun from having more comedy clubs than you actually had comedians. So what happens is, obviously, then you just start, anybody with a pulse, they just start sticking up there behind the microphone going, you know, what's the deal with everything, right? And, um, yeah, and, and it just went down the shitter. And I just don't fucking get why they, they, they just, they keep doing this. It's like you got a great thing, EDM, electronic dance music, I guess is what it's called. And, uh, well, I guess, yeah, because if you don't have it, there's a bunch of old people like me. At your fucking casino. It's, I've never seen the distance between young people and old people greater in the entire time that I've been coming out to Las Vegas, which has been um, since the late 90s. I've never seen it bigger. But you used to see a decent mix of people in the casino. And then, like, certain places, like the Hard Rock Cafe, Casino, whatever the fuck they called it, that was, like, the place to go. And you went in there, and there was a bunch of young young kids in there. Uh, and by kids, I just mean people in their 20s. Um, but basically, all the other ones were kind of like, you know, it was a decent fucking mix of people. And there were people gambling. And now, I don't know, the tables and shit were dead Granted, it's a fucked up time to come out here. Hockey and basketball are over, so a lot of the sports books are kind of drying up. But, like, um, it's going to be interesting to see when this bubble bursts exactly what is going to happen and what the fuck they're going to – they don't give a shit. I was going to say what they were going to do with their rooms, those giant square rooms, what they can turn them into. Um, so right now, yeah, you basically have ventriloquists or that fucking – that, that uh, EDM music out here. And, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's a, uh, I, I, I just, that, that thing is going to, that thing is going to fucking nosedive. It's going to nose. I mean, you got to be thinking that as you just keep building another room, we're giving him 50 million. We'll give him 60 million. This is like what the Red Sox and Yankees did. The next thing you know, you know, you got Eric Gagne, up there fucking doing that shit. And then it's over. Then one day somebody just stands back and goes, what the fuck are we doing? But you got to do it. That's what you, you know, back when I was coming up, it was that hair metal shit. Everybody blew out their hair, right? Said something about the devil. And then you had a little fucking ballad. And then you shot the ballad, right? And the ballad was always in black and white in the beginning. And then when the guitar solo finally came in, um, that's when it went into color. They just ride it into the fucking ground. I think that's what you do on that side of the business. You see a trend. This is where the money's going. And you just fucking jump on that horse. You don't stop for water. You just ride that thing until it fucking it dies. And then you get off the fucking thing. And you act like you, you, you never rode the horse. And, oh, dude, I'm oh, EDM. I can't even listen to that shit. Even though you made like a zillion fucking dollars off of it. So uh, 
I don't know. I know I'm obviously in way over my head here. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I found it really fascinating. And I got to tell you, I'm happy for all those goddamn G- DJs, you know? I mean, you know what's great about their, their, uh, their like stand up comedy bubble here, this thing that they're fucking riding, is they are making money. They're going to be set for life. All right? So if there's any goddamn DJs listening to this fucking thing, I better not see you on some behind the music thing talking about how you blew your $50 million a fucking year. You should be set for life. Oh, my God. If I made $50 million in one fucking year, you figure, all right, you got to you're giving away 10 to your agent, 10 to your manager. That's 10 million. Now you're down to 40 million. Then the government's going to come in and they're going to fucking whack you for at least half that. So you still got like 19 million bucks. Just go out and just buy a $5 billion piece of property. Oh, but then what do you, then you got to pay the property taxes on that. Someday when the DJ shit ends, buy like a million dollar house in Alla fucking Bama. Right? Go down there in Alabama where everything's fucking cheap. Or Arkansas. Something like that. And just buy yourself a big spread. Pay the fucker off. And then when the whole thing goes into the shitter. And nobody cares about that music anymore. Because it's, you know, you got to wait 20 years until it becomes cool again. Because it goes down the shitter. And then the next decade, they got to have their own personality. So they, they got to hate on the, the decade before. But the decade before the decade before is always considered cool. Right? Like right now, slowly the 90s are going to start coming back. You know? Like in the 90s, then the 80s, when I was coming up, everybody was into the 60s. And everybody thought the 70s sucked with disco and soft rock and all of that fucking shit. And then in the 90s, all of a sudden, the 70s became cool again, right? And there was all these movies like Boogie Nights and all of that fucking stuff. And all this disco music that everybody loved and then hated, then they loved it again. So uh, this, I'm calling this right now like Paul Verzi. This DJ music is going to be considered the shit by a certain segment of the population. Okay? In the 2020s, everybody's been like, oh, my God, it's fucking awful. Emperor's new clothes. What was going on? Everybody stood there with glow sticks, pumping their fist in the fucking air. And then uh, the hipsters of the 2030s, of the 30s, they're basically going to be like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. They'll be walking around with mouse heads on on top of their fucking heads. Gee, Bill, that's really insightful. So you mean like nothing's going to change in the future? Yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. Go fuck yourselves. All right. This is the Monday Morning Podcast. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, this is about as good as it gets. I hate to tell you. This is, this is what I'm bringing to the table. And um, so if you want to leave, I totally understand. Oh, my God, the fucking iPhone. I get it. I heard the first fucking one. Jesus fucking Christ. Why does it do that? It rings, and then you don't pick it up. I literally push the fucking button to say i don't want to you know it's funny some dj that boom boop 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 they could turn that into a hit song and if you'd be you know like they could blend that with guns and roses whatever the fuck that sweet child of mine which by the way i heard the blending of that last night at this bar that i was at and i literally thought that somebody had put on two fucking stereos at the same time stereos that's how old i am and I got to be honest with you, it, it sounded like absolute shit. That was not a good example of that. Uh, it fucking annoys the shit out of me when young kids think that that's fucking amazing. When somebody blends this album with that album and they can't fucking believe it. Like, oh shit, how did they do that? It's like, well, you, you basically, you find two songs that are the same tempo. You know, that's all you need. If they're the same tempo, they'll all fit. That's it. (laughs) So that's your homework this week. Some up and coming DJ. I want you to have a hit. I want you to get out here to Vegas and start vacuuming up all this money that they're throwing at these uh, DJs out here. Take that fucking boop, 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 whatever the fuck that is. You know, and blend that with uh, Lawrence Welk's Winchester Cathedral. 
or whatever the fuck you want to do with it. I don't, I don't give a shit. 